good versus evil, and the return of Christ. Can we read the signs? And how do we know when he will return? We listen to what he has to say. And on the fourth day, the sun, the moon, and the stars were made, of course, but on the fourth day, we're told, God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs, seasons, and for days and years. Let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. He made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, sun, the lesser light to rule the night. So the first thing he has said, dividing the day from the night, let them be for signs. So how do you have a sign from the two great lights, the sun that rules the day and the lesser light, the moon, to rule the night? And it is my opinion that they are eclipses. I mean, we can say CMEs and solar flares, but that is not a sign in the moon. That is activity within the sun. So taking into account that the Bible is the ultimate word and God's word is the ultimate, and that is our, our guide. What it has said is there will be signs in the sun and the moon. So how do we have that? And the only thing that I can lean forward more so than any other idea is it is the idea of eclipses. So when we come back to the eclipses, we're talking about rare eclipses that have meaning to them. And I would say that these eclipses of this year and next year that are on the Jewish holy days are rare and since they fall upon those days those are meaningful rare eclipses but those would be the kind of signs in the Sun and the moon which he said he would use them for signs and if you can think of any other way that the moon gives a sign other than an eclipse, please notify me and tell me. I mean, we don't get CMEs from the moon. Yep, the moon regulates tide. So I hold to that, that eclipses have something to do with signs. And we have just had one in April. And so as time passes until we get the next one, and any other any other two big big ones on the holidays in 2015 we're going to look back between each and every one and we're going to see what has occurred and then we're going to be able to understand why they were signs now he also talked about false Christ and other different things. Many will come in his name saying, I am Christ, and they're going to deceive a lot of people. You're going to hear of war, wars and rumors of wars. You're going to hear of real wars, actual wars, and talking about there's going to be wars. But don't be troubled for all, the, all these things have to happen. They must come to pass. But that's not the end. The end is not yet. Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, famines, you know what a famine is, pestilences, you know what that is, and earthquakes in diverse places. 
Now these things will happen, and they're the beginning of sorrows, and we've already we're already seeing them. And they will deliver you to the afflicted and shall kill you. You'll be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Many be offended and betray one another and shall hate one another. Many false prophets are going to rise and deceive many. Iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. You see, this word has to spread all over the world. Even if there was, say, hypothetically speaking, one small uh, pygmy tribe stuck in the jungle somewhere that had never heard it. Well, the end couldn't come until they had an opportunity to hear it, to choose it or reject it. Witness to all nations preached in all the world. The abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet. When you see that, stand in the holy place. Let him which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the house stop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. When you use the word woe, that's some serious stuff. And woe unto them that are with child them that give suck in those days. Pray that your fight not be in the winter, or neither on the Sabbath day. For then should be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. That is a statement in and of itself. No nor there ever shall be, except those days should be shortened. There should be no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Think about that. <clears throat> Except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. How do you shorten a day? Have you thought about that? A day is going to be shortened because there's going to be something so seriously terrible going on that if the day were not short, shortened, there should be no flesh be saved. So the only thing I can lean more to thinking of is the earth is spinning on its axis, flying around the sun, orbit. The only thing I can think of is the earth is going to start to spin faster because it's X amount of hours that the sun is visible on our side of the world and then it gets dark and when it gets dark on this side it gets daylight on the other side. Does that make any sense to you guys? That's the only meaning that I can think of that holds some kind of a weight. So somewhere along the line, it would seem that we're going to spin faster. And it would seem that so that no one certain part is in position in the length of time that it is now in the current span of daylight and nighttime. Think about that and let me know if you got any ideas of anything different. And if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is the Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall rise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, the moon will not give her light. The stars shall fall from heaven. The powers of the heavens shall be shaken. 
and shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. If you are not a believer, I suggest that you become one. It is your only hope for your salvation. God does not want anyone to go to hell. He takes no pleasure in anyone's death, especially souls that are lost to the dark side and have to be condemned in hell forever. He doesn't want that for you. He wants you to be with him in heaven. For we all were in the beginning. He wants you to come come back to him in the end. So I want you to give some thought if you're an atheist, if you're an agnostic, if you're a, a Hindu, a Buddhist, a Muslim, or whatever you are that's that's not a believer in Christ. You need to accept him as the Son of God, as the Messiah. You need to accept and believe that he died for you. It was either mankind or him. Mankind takes the punishment and judgment for the sins or him. And he did it for us. He took all that punishment so that we wouldn't have to. So that we would have a way to be forgiven so that we could gain salvation, so that we could have an opportunity to come live in his kingdom. That's all you got to do is take it. But you got to repent. You got to repent of your sin. That means turn away from it. That means don't do it anymore. As hard as it is to not do it, you can accomplish that. You might, you know, you're not going to be perfect, sinless. You might backslide sometimes, but as long as you're making the effort, it's going to get easier and easier and easier to walk away from it. It'll get to where you're, what you were doing all the time, you're doing hardly any of the time. And then, if things work out real good for you, you won't be doing it any of the time. There might be some other stuff in there, but... Things will get better and improve for you, and it will please him. And he'll smile upon you, and he'll be happy. You'll feel better. You'll be happy. God, I would pray right now for everyone who has not been saved, that they would say a prayer and admit that they are sinners and that they are sorry for everything that they've done wrong and that they ask for forgiveness from you. That they accept you into their heart as their personal Savior. And they believe with all their heart that you are the Son of God. That you did suffer and die on the cross and take our sins away with your shed blood. That you died and you did descend into hell and for three days then you arose again and conquered death you showed that you are truly the most powerful and the most holy of holies and anybody that wants salvation can claim it from you and I hope you touch all their hearts tonight and any time that they listen to my voice and hear this video, because you know how precious each and every person is, you know exactly how many hairs are upon their head, and all you want to do is love them and show them that you do. In your name we pray. Amen.